It's the song of the redeemed rising from the African plain. It's the song of the forgiven drowning out the Amazon rain. The song of Asian believers filled with God's holy fire. It's every tribe, every tongue, and every nation A love song born of a grateful heart It's all God's children singing glory, glory Hallelujah, He reigns, He reigns It's all God's children singing glory, glory The forwards, God up in the heaven is Let praises echo from the towers of cathedrals to the faithful gathered underground. Of all the songs sung from the dawn of creation, some were meant to persist. Of all the bells rung from a thousand steeples, none rings truer than this. It's all God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah. He reigns, He reigns. It's all God's children singing glory. Cause all the powers of darkness can't drown out a single word. It's all God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah. He reigns, He reigns. It's all God's children singing glory, glory. children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns, it's all God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns. Good morning and welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Gina Maria Coburl and I am the interim pastor here at Messiah. And uh, I've been to three services. I think I've seen different people almost every time, so I'm very impressed with all the musical talent. Um, just to see, like, like I said, so many different faces. <laughs> so this is great. Um, we I'm still learning how our service goes, so if I look a lot to them, I'm looking for cues. <laughs> That's partly why. Um, I believe we will have a prayer. Is there slides or is it me? Okay. <laughs> Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we come together this blessed day. We remember those who have served our country but even more so we remember your son who died for us and gave us true freedom freedom in this life and eternal life we thank you for that gift in jesus name amen let us sing our opening song
Living together in trust, hope, we proclaim our faith. We believe in one God, creator of all there is, in all things seen and unseen, heard and unheard. We believe in Jesus Christ, God's begotten Son, who came to bring us new light and new life. This new fire was born to a virgin, Mary, and taught in our world, was crucified for us, died for us, and rose from the tomb for us. He reigns over all creation and will come again. We believe in the Holy Spirit who lives in every breath we take and fills us with sacred presence. In this, we will have a resurrected life in this world and life everlasting in the next. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful where the streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. The walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing Thank you. 
Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Glorious God, we continue to wander from your ways and your will. We continue to do those things which we ought not to do, hardening our hearts. Roll back the great stone from our hearts. Sustain us with the glory and power of the empty tomb. Guide us to a risen life in your presence. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died and rose again for us. Amen. And now, I share with you the entire forgiveness of your sins. That Christ died for you, forgave you, and you have new life. Go now in the peace of heart in knowing this. Amen. Our reading today is taken from Our reading today is taken from the book of Acts. It is the story of our Lord's ascension. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, "Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of his, to Israel?" He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way 
as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. As these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The peace of Christ be with you all. Please share this peace with one another. time, I invite any kids that are here today, if you want to come up front, a little message. So I have a question, have you ever been to a cemetery? Have you ever been to one? Yeah? And have you seen how they decorate a lot of times with flowers around the stones? And sometimes they have one of these on the stones. Have you seen that? An American flag? Yeah. Well, you might see it if you went this weekend. You'd probably see a lot of them decorated with American flags. And that is there because those people who have the flag on their graves, um, died in service to our country. And they did this so that we could be free, so that we could experience certain freedoms, like the freedom to live where we want to live, and to say what we want to say, and to worship where we want to worship. So we have a special holiday to remember them. You know what that's called? Memorial Day. Right, Memorial Day, which is tomorrow. Exactly. And so that's why we have Memorial Day, is to honor and remember those who died for our freedom. But you know what? There's someone else who died for freedom for everybody, not just our country. You know who that is? Yeah, God. yeah Jesus. And so we remember every day and honor every day Jesus who died for for us, it says in John 8, so if the Son, that's Jesus, sets you free, you will be free indeed. So we are free every day. So let's thank God for that. I'm going to have you pray with me, okay? Thank you, God, for the freedoms that we have in our country. But we especially thank you for the freedom that we have through your Son, Jesus. And we pray this in his name. Amen. Thank you. You guys can have a seat. Seventeen years ago, I was in a time of a lot of changes and a lot of transitions. I had been attending seminary to get my Master of Divinity degree. In college, I had studied religion and just had found that I really enjoyed it. And I went on to seminary. And I was working on my master's there. And in that time, I'd had a really rewarding and, and uh, 
enjoyable experience doing my chaplaincy internship uh, at various uh, care facilities. In fact, I loved it so much, instead of doing the required one unit, I stayed and did four units, so about two years worth. And I came back to school, and I was working on my degree, and one of the things you're required to do is an internship as a pastor. And so I went on my internship, but the congregation that I went to was having a lot of difficulties with the leadership and, and complications, and so the seminary decided to end my internship after four months. And this was a good decision for me, for my calling, for that congregation. But it was also a very painful one, and it really made me stop and reflect and want to take some time to heal and see, is this where I'm going or not? And so I graduated with my Master of Arts instead, and really found myself in this place where I didn't have a plan, right? I had this planned, and now I didn't have a plan. And so I was in this place of transition, change, unknowns. Now at that time, the metro uh, bus line in Minneapolis was running an ad on the back of their buses and one day I found myself stopped at a stoplight and the bus was uh, ahead of me a bit so I couldn't see the whole ad I could only see the top part and what I read was where are you going and it made me stomach drop as I contemplated that question where am I going? I don't know where I'm going. And if I knew where I was going, I don't even know how to get there. What's, what's the map? Where's the map? I don't know what I'm doing. Well, eventually the light changes. The bus pulls ahead. I see the whole ad. It says, where are you going? We'll take you there. And that really made, made my head spin more. As I thought the question, yeah, maybe I'm not in this alone. Who is going with me in this journey of where am I going? What if life and transition is first about asking who is in this with me Instead of immediately trying to figure everything out to answer the who, the when, where, what, and how to get there. At the beginning of Acts, we hear a story of the disciples with Jesus after he is resurrected and in his ascension. And they are in a place where they don't know up or down. They find themselves wondering, where are we going? What are we doing now? What's the plan? We don't have a plan. They have a promise. They have a promise that they're going to receive power that's going to empower them to be witnesses across the world. They have Jesus with them teaching and commissioning and leading them. And they have hope that now that Israel will finally have that great change, that they will rise up and no longer be occupied by the Roman Empire under the resurrected leadership of Jesus. And they do experience a great change but it's not what they expect. It's not the kingdom of God come to Israel. It is that Jesus leaves them. And that leaves them feeling quite confused and lonely and fearful. You see, Jesus had a next step in his journey to complete as well. We say in our creed, when we confess our beliefs, that Jesus ascended 
and is seated at the right hand of God. And when we say that, we're not talking about some frozen in time throne room with a right handed throne that Jesus sits in. That's the image we get, but that's not what it means at all. In fact, what it means is quite opposite to that concept of being separate and apart from us, watching the world from a distance, but rather what ascended to the right hand and seated at the right hand of God means is that Jesus received the full power and authority of God the Creator so that Jesus could become the cosmic Christ that is fully present at all time throughout all the world, all the cosmos. That Jesus is now even more present in our lives, no longer in the embodied form that he was in at his crucifixion and resurrection, but that now he is present cosmically. That's what we're saying. He is a totally universal presence. So just as Jesus had this next step, he needed to complete this. This was his journey. He commissions his disciples that they have a next step. Their next step, their next great act, is to live in the in-between time and wait. The first great act of the apostles in the book, the Acts of the Apostles, is to wait. But we don't like waiting. Waiting is kind of the opposite of what we value, right? We're doers. We want to get things done. We value ourselves by our accomplishments and our successes and our measurability of what can be crossed off the lists. But waiting is a great value as well. Waiting helps us focus on who is in this with us rather than the how, when, where, and what of getting it done. Waiting has an active quality to it. It is a deeply undervalued spiritual practice. The disciples waited in community. They removed themselves from distractions, and they prayed together. In doing this, Jesus' followers are practicing the number one thing they need to practice to fulfill the their whole commission, their whole journey. And that is learning to become a responsive community, responding to God's guidance and movement and direction. And to do that, they had to practice how to do it. And so they waited. In spiritual direction, there is a term called outrunning your guide. It comes from the Quaker faith. Now, Quakers condition themselves to be listening and responsive to God's guidance to know what to do for their work and calling. Their whole faith is built around that attentiveness. And even in that, there are those who become impatient with waiting for the Spirit to prompt and start to fill in the blanks of what they think God might be guiding them to do or what they think that next step should be. And that is called outrunning your guide because they're filling in the blanks of their guidance. Prayer and devotion to knowing the will and, and mind of God are central to the act of waiting and of resisting this fill-in-the-blanks temptation. The Holy Spirit enabled and guided the disciples in their whole journey, which you can read in the book of Acts. And that Holy Spirit continues to this day guiding us. But how do you tune in? How do you get to connect with that guidance? 
Well, Acts 1 gives us a pretty simple three steps. First, we need to focus on the present. Focus on now. Remove the distractions and the fears of what will be thinking or what could be or what might happen later and actually just focus in on what is happening now. That's called finding your upper room. Second, you need to keep connected to community, to a support system, to God. It says in Acts 1, they went to the upper room that they had been using as a meeting place. Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, Judas, son of James. Also, women were included, and Jesus' mother, Mary, and his brothers. So they connected with the community that they knew and trusted. And when they connected, they agreed that they were in this for good. They were completely together in prayer. And that's the third part, prayer. By praying, I don't just mean our lists of requests to God. That is a type of prayer, and we, and we do it regularly. It's called petitions, but there are other ways of praying. We can pray through gratitude, through gratitude lists, writing up gratitude lists. Another form is just simply listening, being still and listening. We pray when we start or end our day with scripture or devotion. We pray in crying and laughing with friends. That is a form of prayer we lift up to God. We can pray through journaling. And prayer can be active. We can pray and focus in on God while we're walking and running. We're always learning. We're always learning how to trust the Spirit. It's a process. You never really get it done. You live it. I remember a friend sharing a bit of wisdom that 17 years ago when I was wondering, where am I going? She said, everything you are, you are because you made it through the past. Isn't that the truth? Everything you are, you are because you made it through the past a lot of times. When you feel lost, you really aren't lost. When you don't know where to go or what to do, God wants you to be still. Hug a tree and stay in one place. Because God is coming to you. God's a quiet God, but God is a fully present one. God knows your pain. God also knows what it is that will heal that pain. No matter how distant you feel, God wants so much for you to feel God's love. He would die for you. Claim your upper room. Claim your community, your support system, and claim prayer. Trust the Spirit. When life is in transitions, do not seek first to know answers to where, what, when, and how you're going to do things. First, focus on knowing who is taking you there, who is with you in this time. See, on God's bus, there is always room for one more to take you there. Amen.
with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. With all your heart. Let us pray, rejoicing in the risen life of Christ. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church. Ups and downs, problems, tragedies, and ordeals are part of the fabric of human life. We pray for God's reassurance and renewing spirit in every circumstance, and that we are present and caring companions for people who hunger for hope or for comfort or assistance, or encouragement, or simply friendship. Lord, in your mercy. For the earth, for forests and vineyards, marshes and springs, for grasslands and pastures, farmlands and orchards, protect your creation from damage by earthquake, flood, wind, drought, fire, or hail. Lord, in your mercy. For the ascension of our Lord. It's tempting to fix our gaze and attention heavenward, eagerly awaiting the day when we will be liberated from this life and place. We pray the Spirit will in redirect our attention and energies to the work and ministry we have been called to and entrusted with here and now, serving our neighbor, sharing the gospel, and equipping disciples. Lord, in your mercy. For the nations, for those who govern and all who hold authority, 
For those who have been displaced by warfare, economic hardship, or disaster, we especially we pray for the people of Manchester. We give thanks for the emergency services and for the many ordinary people who demonstrate compassion in responding to those caught up in tragedy. Lord, in your mercy. For Memorial Day, on this day we remember and give thanks for men and women who have served in the armed forces and sacrificed their lives for ideals of justice, peace, freedom, and well-being for our country, other nations, and people who suffer oppression, injustice in this world. We especially pray for the safety of those called to serve our country. James Allwert, Jacob Henry, Megan McKinley Daniel, Nathan Myers, John Umlin, T. Wilkinson, and Ryan Zinter. Lord, in your mercy. We lift up prayers of sympathy for friends and family of Pearl Rabenic Spots, Marilyn Bell's mother, and prayers of healing and wholeness for Vera Kimsey, for Marietta Young, and for James Dean and his wife. Lord, in your mercy. And joining our voices with your faithful ones in every time and place, we offer our prayers in the name of the risen one, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Jesus gathered with his disciples on the night in which he was betrayed, and he took bread, and he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup and he blessed it, and he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my, of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Whenever we eat of this bread and we drink of this cup, we do so remembering that Christ died, Christ risen, and Christ shall come again as we receive this meal of forgiveness and wholeness. May it sustain us in our lives. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done one earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You are all invited to this meal. The ushers will uh, let you know when you can come forward. If you need someone to assist you, just let them know, and we will bring the elements to you. All is prepared. Let us come and receive. Amen. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my day. This is my daily bread. 
your very word spoken to me and I Please stand. I invite you to hold the hand of the person next to you and receive the blessing of this meal as a community. And now may you be strengthened and blessed in the grace and forgiveness of our Lord Jesus Christ given to you in this meal to sustain you in your every day. Amen. Receive the benediction. Now may the power of God, our creator, strengthen you. May the love of Jesus heal you. And may the wisdom of the Holy Spirit guide you now and forever. Amen.
Healing and care to all in need. Go in peace and serve the Lord. 